Hey everybody, thank you for joining and welcome to the first episode of my new Project Euler series. If you're not familiar with projecteuler.net, it's a pretty cool website with tons of different coding challenges centered around solving different types of math problems. In this series, we'll be taking each problem one by one, looking at the problem statement, reviewing different ways we can implement the solution, and checking our answer to see if we did it correctly. And as we go through each problem, it'll get progressively more and more difficult. So well, let's start with this first one here, multiples of 3 or 5. This problem states, if we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9. The sum of these multiples is 23. So they want us to find a similar sum for all of those numbers below 1,000. So let's go ahead and go to our workspace over here to the right. So this I have organized into two different sections, problems and utils. Problems is where each project Euler problem will get its own folder and file where we'll put implementation specific to that problem. Utils is somewhere where we'll put common logic that'll help us in more than one problem. So for example, prime numbers, dealing with prime numbers, generating them, that spans over multiple problems. So we'll put that somewhere in utils. And if anything else comes along as we go, we'll do that as well. Let's go ahead and create our new file. So I'm going to be coding this in TypeScript. If you're not familiar with TypeScript or it's not your favorite language, that's fine. You'll still be able to follow along just as well. The, if you're not familiar with TypeScript at all, it's an extension of JavaScript and the syntax looks very similar to most common programming languages and is very easy to learn and follow. So I'm going to be programming this within a class. Now that's not necessary for the problem, but I decided to do it just so I can take advantage of one of my utils here, this solution.ts. That'll just handle some of the common concerns of printing to the console and actually running the solution itself. So get problem name, I have to implement that. That's just multiples of three or five and protected solve. So this is where we'll actually put our solution. So let's think about how we actually want to go about solving this. The first thing I can think of is the brute force solution of iterating through all the numbers from one to the limit, which here was 10 and here was 1,000. The reason that's called brute force is because it's just going over every number and it's not optimizing. Like we don't need all the numbers, but we're gonna iterate over them anyway. But that's okay, we can start with the brute force solution, there's no shame in that. Thinking through the brute force solution helps you get an understanding of the context a little bit better, the, some of the edge cases in the problem, and the thought process can lead you to optimizations along the way. So let's get started with that. I'm going to make a method here called brute force solve. I'll accept the limit, which is just the highest number we'll go to, which is 10 or 1,000, and it will return a number, which is a solution. So in this, we'll iterate over all the numbers and add it to the sum if it's a multiple of 3 or 5. So we'll start by creating a sum variable and setting it to 0. Then in a for loop we'll use, we'll set i to 1 initially. No point in setting it to 0 because that would do nothing to the sum. So we'll set it to 1, and while it's less than the limit, we'll increment it. Accordingly. Now we have to check if it is a multiple of 3 or 5, and we can do that by using this modulus operator. So what this means is if i mod 3 equals 0, then we'll proceed, and the modulus will give us the remainder of the division operator. So if i was 7, then i modulus 3 would give us 1, because 6 is the closest multiple of 3, that plus 1 is 7. If it is 6, it'll give us 0. So we're checking if it's 0 for that reason. If it's 6 or 9 or anything, it'll return 0. And we're saying OR if it's a multiple of 5, because we accept it in either case. And if it is, add that number to sum. And at the end, when it's all said and done, we'll go ahead and return sum. I think I have a syntax error here. Oh, I have to say if. So let's go ahead and try it for 10 to make sure that we have the right solution. So 
So 10 gives us 23, that is the answer here, as expected. Let's try it for 1,000 now. We got this number 233168. So let's go ahead and see if that is the correct answer. It is. Okay, so we got the solution and we submitted it. We solved the problem, which is great. But I'm wondering if we can do something to make this a little bit more efficient, right? Because it's the brute force solution that goes through everything. Now that we have the actual answer we're looking for, maybe we can make this thing a little bit faster. So I'll put the solution here in a comment so we can refer to it and I'll comment out this brute force solve. So now we can make a different solution. Okay, so let's brainstorm a little bit. What can we do to this in order to make it a little bit faster? And the first thing I'm thinking of is, instead of adding plus one, we can add plus three, right? So we're skipping the numbers that we don't need, and then we add it that way. So the only problem with that is we're also skipping over numbers that are multiples of five. And I think we can solve that one just by doing two loops, one for three and one for five. So let's give that one a shot. I'm going to call this one smart solve. So we'll start off the same way, declare that sum and set it to zero. Then we'll set i to 3, we'll make a new for loop which will go over multiples of 3, so we'll set i to 3, i is less than limit, and we'll increment this thing by 3 each time. And for this one we'll just add i to the sum. Now we'll do it for 5, let i equals 5, i is less than limit, i plus equal to 5. Now we have to be careful because some numbers are multiples of three and five at the same time, such as 30. So if I just did sum plus equals i here, 30 would be added twice, 60 would be added twice, and every other common multiple. So we have to do something to prevent that. So what can we do? Simplest solution is if i mod three is not equal to zero, then we add it. So that way we can skip over numbers essentially which have already been added by the previous loop. Then we'll go ahead and return sum. So let's try this with 10. We should get 23 again. I have to, sorry, I have to say return. Let's start smart solve. Okay, so we got 23 as expected. We'll try it for a thousand now. Two, three, three, one, six, eight. Very good. So we got the same results. So now our input was small enough for it to be at the same speed with the brute force or the smart solve, but at higher numbers, there would definitely be at least a little bit of a performance improvement between the brute force and the smart solve. And other than the performance improvement, it's so good to just think of the concept, see what we can do in our own minds to make this solution more efficient and make sure our understanding of it grows as we consider the problem. So just out of curiosity, let's see what happens if we make this number a lot larger. So let's make this 98765. So with 98765, we get this larger number here. That one took four milliseconds. Let's see what we get here. So we got the same number twice. It was a four versus three millisecond time. Now that's too close to know for sure. If we, were, if we didn't know anything about the implementation, we couldn't say for a fact the second one was faster than the first just because of how close those times are. So maybe we can do something to test this a little bit better. I'm going to add 4, 3 there. So that is a definite performance improvement. We improved by 23 milliseconds. And we got the same number in both cases. So yeah, as that number gets bigger, the performance boost becomes more apparent. And I'm sure that there's even better ways of doing this. We're not going to go any more 
in depth here, but I am satisfied that we were able to find a better solution than just plain brute force. One quick note, there is a more efficient way to solve this problem than we just mentioned. I'm not going to go into the code implementation here, but I just want, think it's worth mentioning. So we can take advantage of a function which gives us the sum of values from one up to n. So for example, if you put n is equal to 10, it would give us one plus two plus three, etc., up until and including 10. So that function is n times the sum of n plus one, all divided by two. So what we can do is we can find the sum of multiples for some number up to some limit. So for example, three, we can say three times the sum of all numbers up to n divided by three, the integer of n divided by three. Similarly for five, five times that sum where the limit is n divided by five, and then similarly for 15. And then we can just say, give me the three sum plus the five sum minus the 15 sum. So that'll let us do this thing in constant time instead of linear time, which is how we just did it with the looping. So that covers the problem for today. Thank you for joining. If you liked the video, please subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications so that you can stay up to date on more Project Euler problems. Thank you.